What are exponents and what does it mean when your exponent is 0, 1, or a negative number? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there, thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video that you're watching from my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now, like I said in the intro, kanina, pag usapan natin yung exponents, pati na rin yung kapag ang exponent ay zero, negative, fraction, o kung ano mang mga tricky na itsura na yan. Ito yung tipo ng question na lumalabas kadalasan sa mga aptitude exams and of course, part din siya ng mga lecture pagdating sa high school or even sa grade school. Kaya kailangan natin siyang pag-usapan. But before we do that, just a quick little plug. If you want to help support this channel and our cause to democratize education in the Philippines, one way that you can do that is through buying our merch. You can visit our online shop, sa so shop.teamlaika.com for information on how to get the shirts, hoodies, caps, mugs, and other things that I designed for this team. Sa lahat ng mga bumili na, maraming salamat. Sa mga bibili pa lang, maraming salamat din. Sa mga hindi pa makakabili, that's okay. This is our part sa pagtutulungan kung paano natin ma-fund itong ating ginagawa dito sa channel na ito. So, uh, now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to switch over to my PC. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so ito yung lecture natin on exponents. We're going to cover yung positive na exponent, paano kung negative, paano kung zero, paano rin kung fraction. Okay? Na una sa lahat, we have to talk about yung definition. Uh, an exponent, siya yung nag indicate nung number of times na yung number na nasa ilalim or yung base number must be multiplied by itself. For example, if we have 2 raised to 3 or 2 to the third power, ang mangyayari sa kanya is yung 2 ang ating magiging base, tapos yung nasa taas na number, yung kanyang tinatawag na power, exponent, or index number, yun yung dami ng beses na yung 2 ay imumultiply mo sa kanyang sarili. Or yung 2 ay imumultiply mo sa 2. So, kung gusto natin to i-evaluate, or gusto natin makita kung anong ibig sabihin ng 2 raised to 3, or 2 to the third power, what we have to do is to look at yung base number, okay? Tapos, uulitin natin siya ng kung ilang beses yung nasa exponent niya. So, it'll be 2, times 2, times 2. Lahat ng 2 na yan, merong hindi nakasulat or hindi natin nilalagay na power na 1. Okay? At kung tatlong beses mo siyang imumultiply, 2 times 2 times 2, magiging 1, 2, 3. Okay? 3 times na siya. So, 1, plus 1, plus 1, 3 times. Okay? Ito yun. Yung number na yan. Okay? At ang mangyayari would be, Yung 2 raised to 3 equals siya sa 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8. Okay? So, again, 3 times mo multiply yung 2 sa sarili niya. 2 times 2 times 2. Now, paano naman kung ganito? Paano kung raised to 0? Paano kung raised to a negative number or raised to a fraction? Isa-isahin natin. Doon muna tayo sa 0. Ang rule is that when it comes to kahit anong number, if it's raised to zero, equals siya sa one. And if you're taking an aptitude exam, madalas itong lumalabas sa exam kasi alam ng mga gumagawa siguro ng test na nalilimutan ito. Kahit pagaano ka haba yung number, whether it's a six-digit number, minsan meron ding mga factors so may mga x, no? Kung siya ay raise natin sa zero, ang nagiging sagot ay 1. So, pinaka-simpleng sagot yung na dun sa options. Kaya lang, again, marami nakakalimot. Now, ibig sabihin nun, kung meron tayong 3 raised to 0, yung nakasulat kanina, equivalent siya sa 1. Okay? So, this is something that you just need to remember. Okay? Kung ang 3 raised to 1 ay 3, ibig sabihin isang beses mong uulitin yung 3, ang 0 ay magiging 1. Okay? Huwag niyong kakalimutan yan. Now, when it comes to negative exponents naman, kapag negative yung exponent natin, we have to remember na kung ang pagkakasulat niya ay ganito, a raised to negative b equal siya sa 1 over a raised to b. Mawawala na yung negative pero babagsak siya. So one of the things that I always tell people para madali itong tandaan is kapag nega, babagsak. Diba? Kahit sa exam, kapag negative yung thinking natin, hindi positive, babagsak. So, remember that kapag negative ay exponent, babagsak siya or mapupunta siya sa ilalim ng 
fraction. So, yung sample natin kanina na 3 raised to negative 2, ang mangyayari sa kanya would be, I want you to mentally picture this, no? Yung negative na ito, dun sa exponent, magiging parang linya siya sa uh, ilalim ng 1. Okay? So, may extend yung negative na yan, magiging fraction. Tapos, babagsak ngayon yung 3 sa ilalim. Okay? Dito siya mapupunta. Tapos, yung number, okay, nahiwalay na siya dun sa negative kasi ito na yon, Okay? Ito na itong bar na yan. Siya naman yung magiging exponent nung number sa ilalim or yung denominator ng ating fraction na nabuo. So, magiging 1 over 3 squared or 1 over 3 raised to 2. Now, alam natin, again, kung ang 3 raised to 2, equivalent siya sa 3 times 3. Okay? Isa, dalawang 3. Okay? Kasi time, ano eh, raised to 2 eh. So, ibig sabihin nun, equivalent din siya sa 1 over 9. Okay? So, 1 over 9 yung ating magiging pinaka-final answer. Okay? Now, paano naman kung fraction yung exponent? This is where things get a little bit tricky. But you just need to remember yung pwestuhan. No? Kaya ginagamit natin yung mga colors to help you remember this pagdating sa inyong mga exams. Okay? Kapag fraction yung exponent, ang mangyayari, the numerator dun sa fraction na yon becomes the power and then yung denominator or yung number sa ilalim ng fraction, siya yung magiging root. Now, ano ba yung power tsaka root? Di ba napag-usapan natin kanina, yung power would be yung nasa taas. Yung root naman, ito yung square root, cube root, di ba? Yun siya. So, kung meron tayo na sample na 3 raised to 1 half, 1 half yung kanyang exponent, ang mangyari would be, kulayan muna natin para hindi tayo maligaw, magiging uh, square root siya. Okay? Yung 2 denominator, yan, the denominator, which is 2, siya yung magiging root nito. Okay? Square root siya. Na, ang rule natin sa sa root, sa square root, sa cube root is, kapag 2, pwede nang hindi ilagay. Pero nilagay natin dito, just para hindi tayo mal, malito. Kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung series natin on radicals, may video na rin tayo nyo. Ililink ko na lang din sa taas, okay? Sa i button if you're watching on YouTube, para mapanood nyo siya. Meron tayong complete series na doon, adding, subtracting, radicals, etc. No? Pati yung pag-evaluate or simplify ng radicals natin. So again, yung denominator, mapupunta doon sa root. Yung base number, siya pa rin yung number dito sa ilalim ng payong natin. Tapos, yung numerator, pag sinabi natin numerator, yung number na nasa taas ng fraction, okay, numerator, eto yon yung 1, siya yung magiging power, okay, nung bagong number natin. Okay? So, magiging square root of 3 raised to 1 or square root of 3 na lang. Okay? Pwede rin natin siya isulat like this. Square root of 3. Ganyan na lang. Now, paano kung 3 yung denominator instead of 2? Kung 3 yan, magiging cube root siya. Kung 4, magiging apat. Okay? Ganun lang talaga yung mangyayari sa kanya. Basta tandaan natin kung saan nakalagay yung pwesto. Okay? Now, paano naman kung ganito? Now, if you know, notice, this number right here, 2 raised to 4 over 3 siya. So, may numerator. Hindi lang siya basta 1. Ano mangyayari? It's actually going to be the exact same thing. Titinan natin yung pwesto. Okay? Yung base, nandun siya sa loob, sa ilalim ng payong. Yung Denominator, siya yung magiging root, which is 3. Check tayo dyan. Tapos, again, yung denominator, yung root, yung numerator, which is 4, siya naman yung magiging power. So, it will be the cube root of 2 raised to 4. Now, hindi tayo pwedeng huminto dito ngayon kasi may pwede pa tayong gawin. Anong pwede natin gawin? Yung 2 raised to 4, ba? Ang sabi natin kapag may exponent siya na ganyan, this time, positive na siya, uulitin natin yung 2 ng apat na beses. It will be the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 4 times na sinulat yung 2. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? Na kung ganito na siya, di ba ang rule naman natin sa pag-evaluate or pag-simplify ng ating mga radicals is kung ilan yung number na ito, yun yung kailangan na beses na nauulit siya sa loob para mailabas natin siya sa payong. Again, yung radical series natin, nakalink na lang dyan sa description box. Ha? Now, kung 3 ang requirement, 
meron na akong 1, 2, 3, tatlong 2. So, itong lahat ng ito, mailalabas ko siya as 1, 2. Okay? Big sabihin, mailalabas ko yung 2 sa labas. Tapos, may maiiwan na isa. Ito yon Wala siyang kasama sa, tri sa trio nila. So, maiiwan siya sa ilalim ng payong. Tapos, ito yung magiging pinaka-final answer natin. 2 cube root of 2. Okay? So, again, little things like this. Para pagdating nyo sa exams, hindi kayo masyadong malito. Okay? Now, it's time for your quick quiz. The best way for you to check if natuto talaga tayo is through a quick quiz. So, all you have to do is to look at these figures. Ano yung ibig sabihin nila? Ano yung equivalent nila? Isulat nila? Isulat ninyo? Isolve ninyo? And if you're ready with your pen and paper, your timer starts now. Alright, let's see how you did. Magsisimula tayo sa something simple. We have 4 raised to 2. Now, ang base number niya ay 4. Okay? So, kung yung 4 na nasa ilalim, ang gagawin natin would be siya yung number na uulit-ulitin natin. So, 4 raised to 2 is equal to 4 times ilang beses? We have 2 as yung ating power. So, dalawang beses natin siya ulitin. 1 and you have another 1 right here. So, kompleto na tayo. 1 2, imumultiply na lang natin siya. 4 times 4 is 16. So, the answer is 16. Okay? So, we're starting off really simple. Alright. So, sa number 2, you have the quantity. So, naka, ano siya, no? naka parenthesis siya. Negative 4 raised to 2. Na ano pinagkaiba nito? Naka parenthesis siya. So, ayon sa ating rules ng whether PEMDAS man yan o uh, GEMDAS man, ano bang tinuro sa inyo, groupings muna or yung naka parenthesis muna ang unahin natin. So, ibig sabihin nun, yung negative 4, counted siya as it is. Okay? So, negative 4, yung uulit-ulitin natin. Or negative 4, yung magkakaroon ng exponent. So, etong buong ito, negative 4, siya yung uulit natin dalawang beses. Negative 4, times, dahil dalawang beses dapat, dalawa siya, isa nito, at isa pa, na negative 10, negative 4 uli. Okay, so dalawa na sila. Negative 4 times negative 4 is equal to ilan. Now, kapag negative, may multiply natin sa isa pang negative, ang magiging sagot will be positive. So, the answer is positive 16 din. Or, pareho lang siya dun sa sagot natin kanina. Na kung naguluhan naman kayo doon, kasi ano ba yung negative numbers, ililink ko na lang din dito sa taas, sa i button, yung ating lesson pagdating sa mga integers. Okay? Next, we have 4 raised to negative 2. Okay, ngayon, yung negative naman is the exponent. Sabi natin kanina, again, kapag ito yung ginagawa natin, lagi nating tatandaan, yung negative, parang mag extend siya, siya yung magiging fraction, di ba? Yung ating uh, base number, which is kanina, 4. Okay? Ibababa natin siya kasi pag nega babagsak, mapupunta siya dito. Tapos, itong 2 na ito, okay, mapupunta siya dito. Alright. So, this is 1 over 4 squared. Or, 1 over 4 times 4. Dalawang beses kasi naulit. Or, 1 over 16. Okay? So, again, fraction na siya. Kapag ang sagot nyo dito ay 16, mali na siya. Na ito ang pinakasimple sa lahat. Any number, 4, 2,000, 1,568,726, kahit anong number pa yan. Kung kan ang kanyang exponent ay 0, ang magiging kalabasan nito ay 1. So, the final answer is 1. Next, punta na tayo dito sa fraction na exponent. Again, anong gagawin natin? Ipupuesto lang natin sila ng maigi. Magiging radical ito kasi may fraction. Yung number, yung ating base number na 4, ipapasok natin sa loob ng payong. 
Tapos, yung denominator na 2, siya ngayon yung magiging number dito. So, this is actually square root. Yung number na nasa taas, the numerator, siya magiging power nung nasa ilalim ng payong. This is going to be 4 raised to 1 or 4 lang. Kung i re natin ito, this could also be written as square root of 4. Pero dahil square root lang naman siya, dalawa lang yung kailangan, alam natin na ang 4 ay equal siya sa 2 times 2, which means pwede kong ilabas yung 2 sa payong kasi meron na tayong enough, may dalawa tayo. The answer here is actually just going to be 2. Okay? So again, kung medyo naligaw doon, bakit naging 2 yan? Balikan natin yung lesson on radicals, on simplifying radical expressions. Doon nyo siya makukuha. 4 is also a perfect square, kaya madaling tandaan. Okay? Now, five yung samples natin. I know magkakahawig yung mga tanong, pero ba vastly different yung mga sagot. So, if medyo nagkamali kayo dyan, you can feel free naman to re-watch this video. Balikan, magalan, para mas maintindihan natin ng maigi. Foundation to for a lot of topics sa algebra, some of which na-discuss na rin natin. Kaya importante for you to master this. And if you want more exercises, I'll be posting more questions on my Instagram account. So, if you don't follow me yet, you can follow me at likeamarevillio on Instagram for the new quick quiz questions that we post natin sa Instagram story. And if you want to um, look at the throwback quick quiz questions naman at mga important announcements sa reviewers, review events, at iba pa, you can follow at Team Laika on Instagram. Kung may TikTok kayo, nagpo-post din tayo ng mga bagong quick quiz questions sa math at English. Pati na rin logic sa at Team Laika on TikTok. And for the more personal videos, mga skits, advice videos, motivational videos, you can follow at Laika Maravilla on TikTok. See you online. Alright, hope you learned something today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends. Lalo na kung mag-e-exam din sila. Dato yung salami tayo matutulungan. And as always, if you want to reach out to me directly, get the reviewers that I may join the online or live review events. You can go to www.facebook.com slash teamlike for more information. You can also check out yung ating mga online na mga social media accounts for more free content, including a new channel, which is the Learn With Like a Channel, kung saan natin nilalagay yung ating mga live stream sessions, mga mas mahahaba at mas nahimay na lectures on age problems, proportion problems, etc. And you can find that channel in the description box if you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. And as we always say, this channel to never stop learning. Aja, aja. Kainian. I'll see you in the next video. And bye for now.